Uh, hello friends, today I'll be talking on this transcranial Doppler uh, as a part of ultrasound uh, series. So recently we had a subarachnoid hemorrhage so uh, and our trainees have to be cognizant of uh, nuances of doing this transcranial Doppler. Uh, so it's a very simple procedure but it is good that uh, one keeps doing it on patient and even maybe on volunteers to just get a grasp of uh, doing it and it's fairly simple procedure and quite a valuable tool in ICU to get to understand if a subarachnoid hemorrhage is going into vasospasm. So we should acknowledge Dr. Pratibha for uh, helping me develop this content and the videos. Uh, yeah, so for any transcranial Doppler, we need to be familiar familiar with the circle of Willis, which I'm sure we're all studying since our video space. So just to be familiar with the anatomy it is very important. Uh, so, if you look at joint to form basilar artery, and which should not be relevant when you're doing transcranial Doppler, peripheral artery, peripheral Doppler, more for our subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is MCA. In the internal carotid artery, you can see a bit of internal carotid artery also uh, in the transcranial Doppler. Middle cerebral artery, possibly this is the easiest artery to recognize or identify, and I will, I will show you the video how we check the velocities of this. And uh, anterior communicating artery also is an easier artery to uh, ACL looks blue when you're doing transcranial Doppler and PCL looks red. So if you have that sort of a uh, easier for you to decipher which are these and anterior communicating artery is something which may not be very easy for us to visualize. So for all practical reasons, we can visualize a MCA which is the easiest followed by ACA and followed by PCA, posterior cerebral artery and to some extent the internal carotid artery. So when we put a transcranial Doppler which is usually done on the temporal bone, uh, so the orientation of these vessels becomes something like this. So you have an ACA here, then you have a PCOM here. So as I said, MCA is the most easiest one, which you will see it immediately, followed by ACA and this is PCA. So these are the only three ones which possibly you can keep in mind as to what we will utilize. And uh, the top, uh, we use a basically the echo probe. So pulse wave spectral Doppler velocity is what we look at. So we use phased array probe, two to five uh, megahertz. And uh, as I said, the site where we keep this TCD is temporal bone. And we have to put at a TCD preset and I will show you when I am doing this. And the index of this or the cursor of this probe should be facing towards the frontal bone. So this is the orientation when you are doing the TCD. Uh, this is important. So although these are appear little theoretical, so every vessel when we are visualizing, we need to keep the depth at around uh, 70 to 80 millimeter or up to 8 to 10 centimeters is the depth you would keep when you are doing a transcranial Doppler. And for each vessel, there is a, a certain depth where you would visualize these vessels. And it is just good to know what is the sort of the depth uh, at which you would usually visualize these vessels. So if you look at middle cerebral artery, it's fairly superficial. So you would uh, try to identify this vessel at around 50 to 60 millimeters, so 5 to 6 centimeters. Anterior communicate, communicating artery is a little deeper. So you will see it at 70 to 75 millimeter as you see. So it is a little deeper. So at 65 millimeter, if you, if you are very specific, see, although these are all arbitrary, at 65 millimeter, generally there is a bifurcation of internal carotid artery and the middle cerebral artery is what has been referenced and posterior cerebral artery comes between 60 to 75. So these distances is good to have in mind because if sometimes we may see a, a red sort of a vessel at 40 millimeter, maybe it's good to reorient and try to look at the little deeper planes because these are the uh, depths that where you can be a little more confident that these are MCA, AC and PCA. So maybe 60 millimeter, you can keep it as a ballpark. So a little deeper than that is what you would see these vessels. So this is just a, a video just to show circle of Willis as to how it looks when you have put a transcranial Doppler. As you see, so there is this circle of Willis here and I'll show it once the vessels start coming. So, so you can see, so this is a MCA, as you see, middle cerebral artery. Um, so you would see as a red sort of a blob that appears. And generally, the way one can really identify is to look at the sphenoid bone, not necessarily it is easier to sometimes pick up the sphenoid bone. So once you see this red sort of a vessel that gets depicted, so that is MCA. And here, if you see the depth is not very clear, it's around 60 to 70 millimeter, as you see, they've kept the depth at around 10 centimeter here. And you can see the circle of Willis slowly as it comes. 
So possibly this is the uh, anti ACA, anti asymptomatic artery, the blue one. So as for all the trainees, be, uh, be aware of these positions where you keep the probe. As I said, it, it is kept on the temporal bone with the index or with the cursor facing the frontal bone. So the acronym to remember is FAMP. So you keep at four positions, frontal, anterior, medial, posterior. Although we try to do this, but many a times you just have to maneuver your probe uh, on the temporal bone uh, at the level of the eye. Uh, with the index facing the frontal bone and try to pick up the vessels and most of these ultrasound measure machines are pretty good in picking up this mcs and you, once you put the color doppler so i'll show you how we have done it in our own icu and and it it comes with someone who keeps doing it very often and you can practice it on our nurses because the video i'm going to show we did it on our nurse just to show uh, how to pick up these arteries so when you do a tram trans temporal window so the doctor ideally, whenever you are doing the transcranial Doppler, it is desirable and always suggested that you go behind the patient and as you see in the picture, put the probe on the temporal bone at the level of the eye and with the index facing the frontal bone. So this is the position. Positioning is, so don't sit on the side of the patient or, uh, uh, or even uh, away from the patient. So try to be at the head end because you would get a better sort of a spatial orientation. And uh, these are the different sort of a uh, positions where you can visualize. So transtemporal is what we'll focus in this video because transforamin video, I mean transforaminal view and transorbital is something that uh, we don't use very often in our ICU. But this is a, these are the other views where you can use TCD. And in transtemporal view, as I've already suggested, the three main ones we tend to see is anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, and posterior cerebral artery and sometimes internal carotid artery and this will be your spatial orientation. If you saw that previous video, you saw the MCA and the blue one that came was the anterior cerebral artery which forms a circle of illness. So this is one video just to show, again taken from the web resource to show how you identify the middle cerebral artery. Um, and as you see, it runs lateral to the sphenoid bone. So there is this uh, left MCA artery, as you see here. This is the left MCA artery, which runs parallel to the sphenoid bone. So this is the right sphenoid wing. You see that white one. So I have to say that not very easy that we can always identify that. And along that, you will see this red sort of a vessel that shows up, which is the left MCA artery. So if you can see the sphenoid wing, I think that is the easiest. So a vessel that comes along the sphenoid wing is what is your left MCA artery. So this is just another video. I'll be only showing all the videos. So this is the middle cerebral artery. And if you see the positioning here, friends, so we have kept at 10. Always keep 10 centimeters as your depth. And you see it is at around 60 to 70. So here is 5. So it is shown, seen around 60 to 70 centimeters. So that depth is important. You should not be trying to look for a vessel at around 40 centimeters or 30 centimeters. Go beyond 60 centimeters and look for this pick up of this and then put a Doppler and then measure the velocities. It's very simple, not at all complicated. As soon as you see this, place the sample, press the pulse wave Doppler, you'll get a systolic and diastolic wave and measure the velocity. So again, another sort of a picture just to show how the circle of it is. So anything that is red is LCA and the blue one will be anterior cerebral artery. And uh, this is the thalamus as you can see. So once you see the red vessel and identified as middle cerebral artery lateral to the sphenoid wing. So place the cursor and put the Doppler. So you'll get a curve something like this. So this would be the sharp, there'll be a sharp upstroke, which is the systolic wave. And then there'll be decelerating sort of a downstroke wave, which is the diastolic. So this is the, so the decelerating one is a diastolic wave. So the normal mean flow velocity should be less than 80 centimeters per second. So vasospasm, which we are interested in ICU to identify, it is called as mild vasospasm. If the velocity is more than 120 centimeter per second, moderate if it is more than 160 centimeter per second, severe if it is more than 200 centimeter per second. So along with this, we calculate something called Lindgard ratio. It's very simple. You just measure the mean velocity of middle cerebral artery divided by mean velocity of internal cerebral artery, internal carotid artery. So that if it is less than three, it indicates hyperemia. More than three is vasospasm. 
3 to 6 is mild to moderate vasospasm, more than 6 is severe vasospasm. So very simple, check the velocity of the MCA that you have taken and internal carotid is very easy, just put the probe in the neck and uh, put, put the sample and take the velocity and divide by this. And mean cerebral blood flow. See, the, the ultrasound machine that we have used to do TCDs is the sonocyte. So other machines uh, directly give you the mean velocity. But in this sonocyte, it gives the systolic velocity and then it gives the diastolic velocity. So if you have to calculate mean cerebral blood flow velocity, you have to use this formula. So in our patients, we use this formula. So peak systolic velocity plus end diastolic velocity into 2 divided by 3 will give you the mean cerebral blood flow velocity. And we have to use this if your machine is not automatically giving you the mean cerebral blood flow velocity. So this is something which is uh, instrument specific and you need to be aware what machine you are using and, uh, and do accordingly. So see, if you see this machine, possibly this is done on a mind ray, as you see, it gives a mean velocity directly. So this is the middle cerebral artery mean velocity. And this is the internal carotid artery, which is a big artery. You put a doctor, increase the gate size, and then take the, so it gives a direct velocity, mean velocity. And if you calculate the Lindgard ratio, so this was the mean flow of the middle cerebral artery divided by the peak velocity of the internal carotid artery. And you got the Lindgard ratio of seven, which, which indicates it's a severe vasospasm. It's just a, a representation as to how you look into this ratio, very simple ratio not at all complicated and fairly easy. And uh, there's no huge learning curve for uh, learning transcranial Doppler. It just needs a little bit of patience and right steps. You can pick up these vessels. So anterior cerebral artery, as I said, it uh, so again, a video to show it. Anything that looks blue is anterior cerebral artery. And if you see the depth, it is at a little deeper. See, if you saw the middle cerebral, it came around 60. Here you can see it comes around 60 to 75, sort of a millimeter range. So this is the anterior cerebral artery. Place the pulse wave Doppler and check your peak systolic velocity and the diastolic velocity. So this is the anterior cerebral artery. So again, this is a video just to show again the anterior cerebral artery. So this is the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, so why ultrasound? So the main advantage of ultrasound, if you compare this particular table where they have compared ultrasound with CT, with MRI, with angiography, you will see more pluses in ultrasound. It is a low cost, accuracy is reasonably good and quite portable. You can go to the patient bedside and do and, you, and there is no radiation, no contraindication and low risk. So if you see there are a lot of advantages and now every intensivist is very familiar with the usage of ultrasound. And TCD, if you have the echo probe and if you have a program put into your uh, ultrasound machine, now most ultrasound machine comes with this program. So it's very easy to do. So I'll just show you two videos uh, where we have done in our ICU and certain settings that may be of importance. So this is in our own ICU patient, we have done TCD. Just to show the settings, how we do. Uh, so this is the, you get the peak systolic velocity and the diastolic velocity. then. In the machine, you take an auto trace. Yeah, so, so this is the panel that you would have. So you just put a freeze there and just press the auto trace. Just go through the steps. Okay, you see there is an auto trace there, which our one of our trainees has pressed. So, so this is very simple. So as you press the auto trace, it will show you these three vertical lines. So the first one, you put it at the peak systolic. You just you have to move it to adjust to the peak of this systole and then the peak of the diastole. And if you see on the left side, it gives you peak systolic velocity and end diastolic velocity. You see here, friends, so peak PSV is 41.33 and EDV is 39.73. And use that formula to calculate your mean cerebral blood flow. So just I'll take you through this again. So as you see, we are keeping the process there and you can see this PSV and end diastolic. So as you see our machine, the sonocyte doesn't give you mean cerebral blood flow. So you have to calculate by using that formula. Okay. And this is just a quick video how we did the TCD in our own ICU of our 
एम सी एस एंड पीसीए बिकॉज बिफोर डायरेक्टली यू हैव टू डायरेक्ट द प्रोप टूवर्ड्स दक्सिपेट द कर्स शुड बी रिवर्स टू दक्सिपेट एंड यू सी ए रेड सॉर्ट ऑफ इट इज लिटिल डिफिकल्ट यू मे हैव टू स्पेंड लिटिल मोर टाइम and little more sort of a patients to recognize and identify posterior cerebral artery so this is our own patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage where we did this velocities of mca pca and aca a quick video of 1 minute 50 seconds watch carefully how we went about doing this so that's the mca that we are taking as you see we took a sample we took put a pulse wave so you get a nice peak systolic and diastolic so we put an auto trace and then we capture psv and asv bs uh, systolic and diastolic velocity of the mca so once once we did this we go for a aca so you can see that blue one is the anterior cerebral artery so we are keeping the sample there and capturing the pulse wave so it comes as a reverse so which we have to reverse it and then it will we have to invert it so we we just inverted it and we we again take the systolic and diastole of this so this is the anterior cerebral artery measurements that we are doing so this is the posterior cerebral artery as you see posterior is little deeper if you see it is beyond 65 sort of a millimeter You have taken the sample with the index of the probe directed towards the occiput, so you get this systolic and diastolic. We take the trace. So very simple, so not very difficult. So keep practicing. I think the best way to practice is to just catch hold of one of your uh, trainee or a nurse and do it on them. It's very easy. And this is the internal carotid artery that we are to doing the to check the Lindgard ratio. so once you have mca and ica internal carotid artery uh, sort of a velocities you divide by them that will give you lindgard ratio it should be less than 3 if it is more than 6 it tells you it's a vas spasm so thank you friends so that's all about pcd so very simple so there's not too much of a rocket science in it so little bit of patience position and understand the depths so depths are important and how you place the probe and machine does everything for you and know about lindgard ratio and uh, and know the normal velocities so it should be less than 120 120 to 160 is moderate more than 160 is severe vas spasm that's true. so it's a very easy tool and every icu trainee is uh, expected to know about this so you can visit my website to relook into these videos so thank you thank you one and all